Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about how to repin a connection, how to repin a connector. Um, so let's say, for example, I don't know if you're, um, you're you're on some forums and they're telling you, well, hey, you just changed out your engine. Now you have to repin your, um, or you want to plug a computer in from that engine into your existing harness on your car. Okay, well, what you have to do is you have to repin your um, you have to repin the connectors so you have to take the connectors off of the ECU that's going to go into the car take the wires out and I would actually say you should probably do it one by one but you take the wires out of the actual connector where's the one that I pulled out already and where's the one that I pulled out already basically you take the wires out of that connector and you'll um, there it is so you'll take the wires out of this connector, which is the one that used to go into here. So you'll take the wires out of this connector one by one, and um, it's very hard to find out where these go to unless you have a very, very in-depth wire diagram. So I would suggest following along what somebody else has already done if you're looking into repinning a connector. So. Um, so yeah, just follow along with what somebody else has already done, and and uh, like there's I've seen wire pinout procedures on on um, forums and different things like that for for different cars. But so the different types of pins that would be inside of these connectors, this one actually has the type that has the the lever inside of the connector. So inside of this connector, there would be a plastic lever that pushes down on the pin. Now that plastic lever, it's really easy to pry back. I actually like doing those better than I, more than I do the, um, the ones with the metal lever. The other type are the ones with the metal lever, which is like the one in here, which I don't like working with these. They are a little bit harder to work with. But basically on these, you would just stick the screwdriver in. So when you look, the area where the pin goes in is like here on the bottom where the screwdriver is touching. So it's got a, a flat pin that slides in there, and this little access hole here is so you can get to the lever, and you can pry it down. So all I'm going to do is stick the screwdriver in, wiggle it around a little bit, and I press down that that metal lever that's holding the connection in. If I can do it right, I really don't like working with the metal ones. The metal ones are harder. Because it doesn't, um, like once it pries down, like once you bend it down, it kind of stays down. And then you have to, whenever you pull the connector out, you have to bend it back. Well, okay, I'm not going to try that. So I'm trying to go for easier here. I'll try the yellow one. I'm sticking the screwdriver in and prying the little metal lever down and then it should come straight out that one was a lot easier I don't know why that that red one must have been stuck in there um, some of them are harder to get out than others but basically whenever you pry it out for the first time this is gonna happen there's a little really sorry you can't see this it's a tiny connection and this isn't the best uh, webcam it's not really focusing on what I'm showing but you can try to fry this up with a screwdriver, but I've actually got this little razor blade here that I'm going to pry it up with instead. And all I'm doing is sticking the razor blade in on the back side of the this nice rusty razor blade that's perfect for cutting your finger because you get those nice tetanus, shot, tetanus shots. But I'm just going to stick this in from behind that little flat lever that, that pries up. I'm just going to pry it up just a little bit. You don't have to pry it up very far, but just far enough to where it's going to grab onto the plastic whenever you slide it in. So I've pried it back up and now let's imagine this is a different connector. You just stick it back in the same way it went in before. So this one would go in that way and you hear it snap. I don't know if you heard it snap on the, I don't know if the mic picked up that, but it's back in, I'm pulling on it, it's not coming out. So that's the, the ones with the metal lever built into the connection and like I said you have a little access hole here. Now, 
after you do this a second time, I wouldn't really advise you keep doing it to the same pin unless you absolutely have to because you actually risk breaking off the metal inside the connector. Uh, the metal inside the metal it's on the pin because the more you bend metal back and forth, the weaker it gets and then, and then you break it off. So once you break it off, you have to get another wire and then, yeah. But repinning something is a lot easier than I'm going to say, you, you know, if you get a, a ton of the, you know, butt connectors, if you have something like this, well, first of all, you would need a lot of tiny butt connectors, and I don't really trust how sturdy those things are. I mean, I, I really don't like butt connectors. It's it's a very, very cheap way to do something. Um, if I don't do this and repin something, then I'll solder it and put some heat shrink tubing over it. Um, it's a little bit more involved, but it does end up looking nicer than just a ton of little butt connectors everywhere. And it's considerably more sturdy than using the butt connector. Um, so you're actually fusing metal together with solder. So anyway, <clears throat> so these connectors, I guess back to this one. So this is the ECU connector that came out of, that came out of that. And if I want to, this one is, if you see, you look at it, it's kind of the same way. Like the other one had, this one has one big hole and you have the access. I'm going to hold these both with the same hand. So this one, <clears throat> you have the access hole on top, and, or the access area on top, and it's built into the same hole as this one, as the, um, that the pin slides into. All right? But this one is different. This one, you have the access hole on this side, and the pin slides in on the bottom. So you have two rows, right? There's one row of pins that would go on the bottom. I guess you I guess you would say four rows but these two bottom rows are together and these two top rows are together what I mean is um, this very bottom row is what the pins slide into and then the row above that has all of the access holes to where you can pry the lever back to get the um, to get the pins out and you would need a tiny screwdriver like this to do it preferably one that's smaller because the smaller it is the easier it is to get in there but this one's a little bit fatter um, it's the smallest one I could find to, to do this. I have a, another one that's hardened steel that I use for this. It's a hardened steel, really small, flattened screwdriver. Um, this one's already kind of bent a little bit, actually, now that I look at it. But anyway, um, so yeah, you have the access hole right on top of where the pin slides into. And then this next row up, you have another row of where the pins slide into, and then another row of little access holes. So let's say I want to switch which one? I want to go with the outer ones because they're easier. But if I want to switch this black wire with the red stripe with the red wire with the white, yellow, I think that's yellow, yellow stripe. So let's say I want to switch those two. I want to put one on one side and one on the other side. I mean, uh, obviously you wouldn't want to do that because that would fry something inside the computer. It wouldn't work anymore if you're, you know, yeah. But Let's see. So yeah, uh, all I'm going to do is pop this pin out, and I would suggest doing this one at a time. So if you have both connectors side by side, then you would pop the pin out of one. Oh, wait, sorry. Before I do that, you want to look over the connector and look for something like this. This little square thing is a guard. It keeps you from popping the levers back inside the connector. They're usually on these that are really complex. Um, they're on injector wires. They're on um, a lot of the little sensor wires around the engine. If you want to switch them around, like throttle position sensor or whatever. Um, yeah. So, so there's these. So you pop that back. Now, now that you slid back all the way, you don't slide it out. You just pop it back far enough to where it releases its hold on the levers and you can see when you look at it like this there's a little area where it's popped up and now I'm gonna push it back in it's back in so yeah it's back up now I just pushed it back in to show you that it is actually is a little door thing that pops up so now you wanna try to keep from pushing that back down while you're trying to pop these out because it would interfere obviously since it holds the stuff down 
all I'm doing, sticking the screwdriver in where is the lever you want to look inside to see if it's got the plastic lever or the the metal lever built in but it just that one just pops out so that one went there okay I'm just gonna hold this one between my fingers while I pop the other one out that one's weird oh that one's empty that's why so yeah I didn't look at that I thought this red white wire was on the very side. Okay. So I'm going to pop out this small one. Actually, I think these are two different size wires. All right, that one's loose. I felt it move a little bit. Okay. Yeah, that one's really, that one's a lot smaller. I wonder if it'll snap in now. But these are actually two different size ones. So now I'm going to pop this in where it was, where the other one was. It does not want to go in. It is a different size. Yeah, that's a different size one. So I can't put that one back in there. Let's say if I want to put it in where one of these wires weren't before. I'll just push it in. So, then, so now it's in the middle. It's in there. It's sturdy. It's not coming out. And this other one, this fat one, I'm actually going to put it on the side where I thought the other one was. So I'm going to slide this in here. Make sure it's going in the right way. Slide it in. Snap. Now it's locked in place. And now that little door pops back down like it's supposed to and they're in there they're sturdy so I have the wires that are switched around I'm not going to use this um, and I'm yeah if somebody wants this they actually if somebody's watching this video and they want this like I need that connector well I just switched the wire colors around so I'm kinda hoping that nobody would try to use this but nobody would what are the chances of that so anyway that's that style and then you get onto the fatter ones. These are a little bit different. This is a solenoid. So this is the power. This is the solenoid for my motorcycle, um, or that extra solenoid that I have around for my motorcycle. Basically, this one is the same style. See, so you have this little access door, this little access hole that you can push the pin down with. This is this one's a lot fatter. You can stick a fatter screwdriver in to pry the the pin down, or the little flap down, and then this. Sorry about that. Let me start over. Um, so this one is the this is the solenoid for my motorcycle. Um, this is where the pin goes in. This is the flap that goes down. So pry the flap down. Hmm. I don't think this screwdriver is actually strong enough to do that. Feel it bending. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not working right. It is if you want to, if you're having trouble with it. It's big enough, you and it only has one connector. You can actually drill a hole in the top so you can push down the flap. And you, you can look in and see like how far down the flap is. So you just drill a hole, like say right here and then you can push the flap in. You would obviously want to stop before you hit the pin, but you drill a hole and fill it with super glue or um, hot glue. I even want to fill it with super glue. Fill it with hot glue, something like that. Something that you can cut off the excess with so you can stick the, well, if you really wanted to actually. You don't really have to fill it with anything. And this one is being more difficult. So I'm not gonna worry with it. I'm not gonna bother with this one anymore. But anyway, that's how you would. The receiving end, the ones that are on the receiving end are a little bit easier. Like here's the full harness for a motorcycle, my FZR. Where's one that's off? But the receiving end of the connector, let's say it's something like this. Um, there. 
So you have this type. These, you can see it a little bit better. If you look in, well, I can see it a little bit better. I don't know if you can. But if you look in, you can see it's got the same type of, there's a little metal flap that's on the top. You can see it when you look inside the connector. You pry the flap down and you pop the pin out. And this one, you know, it'll be the same thing. Pry the flap down and you pop the pin. And you slide the pin out. These, if you have some really tiny needle nose pliers, it's actually easier because you can stick the needle nose in and you can squeeze it. And then when you squeeze it, it pushes the pin down and you don't really have to, yeah. So, yeah, that'll, that'll work easier. But, and this is the ugly job that butt connectors will do. Um, I think I just extended the wires, so I used butt connectors. Uh, yeah, but you don't want to do, you don't want to use butt connectors. You want to solder a connection and put heat shrink tubing on it. I think I just did this because I didn't have, I don't think I had any solder at the time. I don't remember why I did that. But, anyway, but that's it. That's how you would repin, repin a connection in an ECU. Um, the dangers associated with that, if you were to try to repin an ECU. Um, okay, so the dangers associated with doing something like this. Um, you can fry your computer. If you do it wrong, you can fry your computer. You can fry your wire harness. You can probably even catch your car on fire. Um, cause all kinds of little problems if you're repinning an ECU wrong. As most of these wires are going to go to whatever they're um, whatever they're designed to go to but some of them are going to split off somewhere inside the wire harness and they're gonna go to multiple sensors so I mean it's really the best way to do something like this is to get both cars that you know like say you're putting an engine in yours and you want to use a computer from the other one or you're putting the engine you're you're putting the computer and the engine out of another car into your car um, and you want to repin um, you want to repin the computer you want to take the connectors from the computer and repin those so that you can use your existing harness to power the new computer in the car um, I hope that made sense so whenever you do that you risk because like I said some of these are going to be splitting off into multiple like say this is a black one so this probably splits, splits off to multiple grounds and this is a brown one and brown and Toyota is actually used as a ground. Um, brown and then um, white with the black stripe is also used in ground and Toyota and that one's just plain white. But um, yeah it, I mean you could cause a, a whole number of problems just you know trying to trying to repin an ECU because I don't know, maybe the car that's coming off of it didn't split off like it is on the new one or it splits off and it grounds to the body when it's not supposed to ground to the body it's supposed to ground to the anyway you would really ideally you would want to cut open the wire harness for both cars fully cut it open and check where every wire goes where every wire comes from what it does um, before you switch something like this over as far as repinning connectors uh, like for sensors Toyota generally stays the same as far as like so the throttle body um, and like other little connections they'll basically be the same have the same wire colors is what I mean uh, the connector might not fit but the wire colors are generally the same and the order of the wires is generally the same so anyway thanks for watching I hope this was informative and I, I did kinda seem to talk in circles for a bit but um, yeah thanks for uh, thanks for watching